Fiberglass duct closure systems must meet the UL181A standard, which is the standard for closure systems for use with rigid air ducts. There are three closure systems covered by the standard. UL181A P for pressure sensitive aluminum tape, UL181A H for heat activated aluminum tape, and UL181A M for fiberglass reinforced mastic closure systems. To be listed by UL and meet the UL181A standard, fiberglass duct systems are put through a series of vigorous tests, 17 in all. The closures are tested for things like adhesion, tensile strength, surface burning characteristics, temperature and pressure cycling, mold growth and humidity, to name a few. Tapes and mastics that carry the UL marking have passed the rigorous UL181A test. Ducts fabricated without UL181A closure materials will not meet the local building or mechanical codes. The closure system for fibrous glass duct systems is one of the most critical parts of the fabrication process. The closure system seals the seams and joints and not only provides an air seal, but provides the structural connection. The use and proper application of the right closure materials can literally make or break your job. The approved tapes and mastics are boldly marked for easy identification. Inspectors look for these closure systems and will shut down your job if the wrong closure is applied. We will demonstrate three different closure systems that conform to the UL181 Class 1 requirements. A pressure sensitive aluminum foil tape system, a heat activated foil tape system, and a mastic and glass fabric closure system. These closure systems have been tested and approved on systems operating up to plus or minus two inches water gauge static pressure and up to 5,000 feet per minute internal air velocity. To close a duct using the pressure sensitive tape closure system, make sure you have these tools handy. A cradle that allows you to create a tight corner joint. As you will see in the demonstration, the cradle is tilted about 120 degrees rather than 90 degrees. This allows you to get the right amount of tension in the facing so that the corner closure is as tight as all the others. You will need an outward clinching stapler with one half inch outward clinching staples. You will need a roll of UL181 AP pressure sensitive tape. The tape also comes in several widths depending on the duckboard thickness you are using. Since we are working with one and a half inch duckboard, we recommend three inch wide pressure sensitive tape. This will give you the recommended one inch overlap on any of the joints you will encounter and you will need a plastic squeegee. We use the squeegee as the sealing tool to make sure that the pressure sensitive tape is properly rubbed down and makes a solid adhesive contact with the surface of the duct. Before applying the tape, make sure the surface is clean and free of dust. The tape manufacturers have recommendations for proper cleaning of the surface. As comes time to close the duct, we're going to end up using three tools a squeegee, a stapler, and a roll of pressure sensitive tape. Pressure sensitive tape comes with a release liner. So when you open your roll of tape, pull off a layer of foil, roll the tape all the way, the paper all the way around, and then tear it off. In that manner, when you get ready to put tape on the duct, you hold both pieces together, and as you pull, the paper will come off. Keeps you from having to try to get the foil and the paper separated. We use a squeegee to put the tape on, and I'm going to use then a stapler that shoots half inch spread leg staples. We put the duct up on this table. You notice that this table has an angle built into it that's a 120 degree angle. Uh, we put the duct up on the table. We're gonna push the duct down near the end, line up the edges, I'm going to push and force the duct back to that 120 degree angle. As I do that, notice that the foil rolls up over the edge. If I put a mark at the edge of the paper, then when I pull it back, you see the gap. You see how much we've pulled that facing up over the top. So I take my stapler. Now I said this is a spread leg stapler. And you can see how the staple legs spread out as the gun drives the staple in. Okay, again I push it against the 
cradle and now we staple. I hold the staple gun flat against the surface and then I roll it over the corner. When I press with the stapler, it helps me keep the duct close together. And as I roll the stapler, it helps move the foil. Staples go about two inches on center. And about a half inch or three eighths of an inch from the edge of the flap. So with the staples in place, we're now ready to tape. I get hold of both the paper and the foil and I pull together. I then place the tape down so that it's centered on the stapling flap. Use my squeegee to cut through both the paper and the tape. I can remove the paper now. Then I begin to squeegee. You want to use the squeegee with a, a lot of pressure. What you want to do is, is work on the tape until you finally see the scrim pattern coming through the tape. Once I've done that, we've got the duct closed. I now take the duct and you see that we've got a few little gaps. I just pat the duct a couple of times and when we're finished, we've got a good tight corner on our duct. 